Happy, Happy Lord's Day, Day KBCF Family! And ganun din ang pagbati namin sa ating mga online visitors. Ang bilis ng panahon, ano, na sa huling bahagi na tayo ng buwan ng Hulyo ng ating Family Month. Mm -hmm. Dalangin namin na ang mga mensaheng narinig natin nitong mga nakaraang linggo at maririnig natin sa araw na ito ay patuloy na gamitin ng Diyos upang itaguyod ang ating mga pamilya. Mm -hmm. Sa nakaraang linggo, natutuhan natin sa ating mga pastor kung paano natin may pupurso ang agenda ng Panginoon. Uh, higit pa riyan, natutuhan din natin yung epektibong parenting sa pamamagitan ng salita ng Panginoon. At kung paano tayo lumago bilang isang family. Ngayong huling yugto ng ating family month, matututuhan naman natin kung paano ma-overcome ang mga spiritual battles natin as a Christian family. And uh, naalala ko lang, ano, before we proceed, invite mo muna yung ating mga kapwa KDCF or sa ating uh, family fun day. Mm -hmm. Ni-invite po namin kayo, magkita-kita po tayo mamayang 3pm sa ating family fun day via Facebook Live. Masaya na naman yon. Yes. May pag-games daw ba? Sabi. Pero sigurado meron yun. Meron yun. May premyo? Sigurado, meron din yun. Oo. At saka balita ko, may parafol pa. Yun. Kaya, see you there uh, with your whole family. Now, let us turn our hearts to God and worship Him together.
today's scripture reading is from the book of Ephesians. Please turn your Bibles to verses 10 to 18 of Ephesians chapter 6. That's Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18. You may follow me as I read from the New International Version. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, Take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your word that you have given us today. Bless us, Lord, with your wisdom and understanding as we study your word. May the Holy Spirit touch our lives and may you help us to apply it into our lives. Bless your speaker for today. May you give him, Lord, the wisdom and use him as your mouthpiece. Thank you, Father, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good day, brothers and sisters. We are blessed to have Pastor Ronel Rubrica as our guest speaker for today. Pastor Ronel is married to Lysel de Maala Rubrica a pharmacist by profession. He worked at Far East Broadcasting Company for 16 years as an announcer, producer at 702 DZAS, public ministries head, church relations officer, and a counselor. He was the senior pastor of Kalaokan Bible Church, his home church, for two years. He was also the senior and lead pastor of the Filipino Christian Church of Dubai for nine years. Presently, he is involved at Church Solutions now, one of the equipping and training arms of PCEC. Also in partnership with Topic Philippines or Trainers of Pastors International Coalition. Church Solutions now is a movement that seeks to uphold and nurture the spiritual well-being of pastors and church leaders. Let us all give a warm KBCF welcome to Pastor Ronel Rubrica. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat mga kapatid. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. And before we dive in into the topic, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Tilingin po natin ang kanyang tulong at ang kanya pong pagpapala. Tayo po'y manalangin. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We ask that you would open our eyes by your word. Dalain po namin that your spirit would awaken us to the realities of this battle and that we would avail ourselves of your word. The truth in it, commands in it, the wisdom in it, the guidance in it, 
as we seek to stand firm in the evil day. Lord, bring these words home to us at this moment so that we hear and understand them, so that we believe and grow in them. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Families are a remarkable and incredible gift. No matter our current status, tayo man po ay married, single, or widowed, we all came from some form of family. The family is an institution ordained and established by God. In fact, it is the oldest of any earthly institution and therefore is the result of God's design and will only function well when we accept His design as the right one. One of God's most precious and fragile creations came into existence the day He created family. Lest we forget, mga kapatid, the ultimate purpose of family and marriage is the greater glory of God. It is supremely about the glory of God to display, to reflect the glory of God. Throughout history, God has used the family as a platform to display His glory to all generations. Yet throughout history, the enemy has tried to steal, kill, and destroy. Since the family is God's design, no wonder Satan desires to prevent it from ever happening. He hates God's design. One of the most suffering institutions in the earth, not just in the secular world, but also within the body of Christ, is the family. It is no secret that Satan aims his arrows at families. Doon po sa hardin ng Eden, he disrupted the marriage of Adam and Eve. In the very next chapter of the Bible, his influence was so great that a brother killed a brother. From that time, our homes had been in his sights. Every Christian needs to be aware of the fact that Satan is trying to destroy all of the families of the earth. He aims in general to destroy what God has created. He, he wants to destroy the witness of our marriage and our family. Satan wants to so destroy our homes that we, we have nothing left for ministry. Apostle Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 5 that our marriages are a picture of the gospel. If the enemy destroys my marriage, I can no longer model the gospel by loving my wifely self as Christ loves the church. Satan knows that God created marriage as a beautiful, living picture of Christ and the church. God designed both marriage and the family for our benefit. Satan knows the value of the family, how it is the fabric of a good, solid society, the foundation of vibrant, growing assemblies, and the future of God's work on earth. Kung magkatagumpay po ang kaaway in tearing down the structure and substance of the family unit, then he will be successful in damaging what is dear to God's heart. Satan's attack on the family has continued until today. At nariyan po ang napakaraming palatandaan sa ating uh, kapaligiran. With the increasing rate of, of the annulment, uh, the, the barrage of showbiz immorality, buksan lamang po natin ang ating television or fire up Netflix, and you'll see picture after picture of society's distorted plan for the family, society's unbiblical redefinition of family, society's vision of how the modern family needs to evolve with the times. Secular patterns of thought and habit have infected Christian homes and families. It's pretty clear that Satan is going to be no friend of the family. Katunayan po, Satan hates your and my family. He will utilize everything in his arsenal to destroy marriages and families. His strategy is to ruin not just on the family, but on your family. Satan doesn't just want to destroy family in general, but your family in particular. And so mga kapatid, we must understand how grave this threat really is. It is not an accident po that Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 follows the Bible's most comprehensive and central teaching on marriage, on marriage and, and family in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 to chapter 6 verse 4. It is followed by a strong warning to beware of the great challenge that is coming. 
Una po sa lahat, in verse 10, we will see there, Apostle Paul gives us a sort of heading that he will go on to explain in the remainder of the chapter. It is his concluding exhortation. Finally, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. And then having told us that, he goes on to expound what it means to be strong and why we need to be strong. And so in verses 10 through 13, we are given the reason to be strong. The reason to be strong in the Lord. And the reason is we are at war. Tayo po'y nasa digma, nasa laban, nasa gera. But the sad thing is, sometimes in the comfort of our homes and relationships, we have no idea that we are in a war. The Apostle Paul wants us to understand that our Christian discipleship is lived out, not distant from the battle lines, but right on the front lines of a broiling war. And, and he, wants to be, he wants us to be ready for the combat zone. The war zone that is the everyday life of a Christian. We need to recognize that we are at war. And the failure to realize that has a crippling impact upon Christian discipleship in our families. We are in a war zone, mga kapatid. At hindi po ito cold war. Mainit pong labanan ito. And it is being fought out in your homes and living rooms and bedrooms. And there are casualties every day. No wonder then that the family is such a battleground. Yes, mga kapatid, spiritual warfare exists in our homes. There is perhaps no greater battlefield we will ever deal with than our families. Christian families should know that we are in the midst of a great spiritual struggle. The family unit is a high-value target in Satan's campaign. He is out to wreck marriages and families. Marahil po ang, 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 ang tanong sa ating pong kaisipan ay ito. How the devil might try to undermine my family? How exactly does Satan destroy families? Mga kapatid, you name it. The possibilities are endless. He might induce a husband or wife to put too much emphasis on a career or to spend too much time pursuing houses, cars, and material wealth. Or he might introduce envy or jealousy or dishonesty in, into the relationship or entice one of them to be unfaithful to his or to her mate or to her spouse. If, if these strategies don't work, he can use greed, lust, pornography, anger, or unforgiveness to drive a wedge between them. He, he can stir up rebellion among the kids. He, he can incite mom and dad to blame one another for their children's social problems or academic failures. He, he can employ social pressures, media messages, or rivalries between friends, neighbors, and relatives to bring out the worst in everybody. There are a million different ways of doing this, and we can be sure that Satan is master of them all. The tragedy of it all is we are often caught unaware and unprepared. Ambushed by an invisible enemy in our homes and hearts. I want you to notice a couple of things, mga kapatid, in particular about the conflict in which every one of us is engaged if we are followers of Jesus. Una po, note, notice the nature of, of the enemy. Paul says, we do not wrestle against f flesh and blood. Our warfare is neither military, nor economic, nor political, no. He says, we wrestle against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Mga kapatid, he's talking about demonic, satanic powers, fearful, malevolent, dark, implacable. Your spouse is not your enemy. Your wayward child is not your enemy. Your circumstances are not your enemy. Satan and his demons are your enemies. It is a terrifying reality that Paul is alerting us to, mga kapatid. He wants us to be on our guard and ready for the conflict, for the battle. Because the enemy will use everyone and everything he can to distract, destroy, discourage you 
even the people you love most. No, let me rephrase that. Especially the people you love most. And that is your family. Satan does not want us to live in unity. And he adores discord, disharmony, or conflict, especially in the family unit. He, he wants us to view our family members as our opponents. So we are so busy firing at one another and we fail to, to, to form a united front against our true enemy. Mga kapatid, it is time for us to ask God to open our spiritual eyes to see the spiritual warfare in the life, in, in our lives, homes, and families. When, when you know you are being targeted, you won't fall for his schemes. When you understand the enemy's strategy, you are equipped to fight for your family rather than with your family. Isn't that exactly where the battle rages? In the details of your daily life, in your home, in your marriage, with your children, with your parents, in your family. Here's the reason we need to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. We are at war. We are in, in, involved in a continuous and irreconcilable war from now until the coming of Christ. The context of our Christian living is, is going to be a war. And it is not a war that we have the natural or inherent abilities and capacities and equipment to win. Our strength is inadequate. And therefore, the Apostle Paul will say in verse 10, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Isn't it, isn't it helpful to notice as He exhorts us to be strong, He also tells us that the provision of grace that we might be strong is readily to hand. Paul, want us, Paul wants us to be ready. Now, now, this is a very interesting thing because the Apostle Paul is asking you if you realize that you need the Lord's strength to win this war, if you realize that you are not in and of yourself up to this particular battle. All the emphasis, mga kapatid, is on having God's strength in order to fight this war. You remember St. Augustine's famous prayer, Lord, command what you will and give what you command. As we exhorted to be strong, Apostle Paul says to those who are in Christ, the strength you need is available to you in Jesus. And so we're not to be overcome with fear. As, as we're going to see, there are a number of connections between this concluding section of Ephesians and the opening section of Ephesians in chapter 1. And this is one of them. The language that he uses to describe our spiritual enemy, he has already used back in chapter 1, verse 21, to talk about the victory of King Jesus. Christ was raised from the dead and seated at God's right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named. And he put all things under his feet. So yes, mga kapatid, be aware, be alert. We are at war. But be bold to press on in the battle, knowing that our commander-in-chief, King Jesus, has already triumphed. Our enemy is a defeated foe. Our enemy is a defeated enemy. Remember, we, we don't fight for victory in spiritual warfare. We fight victoriously. Then secondly, notice the resources were given, we've been given to, to keep us strong in the midst of the battle. Verses 14 to 17 describe for us the armor of God. Apostle Paul makes it clear that we are engaged in warfare. He already reminded you that you need spiritual weaponry and God's strength in order to fight this war. He reminded you that your enemy is ultimately not flesh and blood, but it's Satan's and Satan and principalities and powers and the world forces of darkness in the heavenly places. And so he's saying, Arm yourself spiritually for what you are up against. 
And the main thing, mga kapatid, that He wants to say to you and me is, we, we need weapons that have not been forged or created by human beings. You, you need weapons that have been made by God and supplied by God to you. If you are going to be able to stand in this battle, God has given us a whole armory of spiritual weapons to protect our families from spiritual warfare. We are exhorted twice, verse 11 and verse 13, to put on the whole armor of God. We are to put on the armor of God. Remember that in the Old Testament, God himself is pictured as a warrior on behalf of his people. He is a warrior. He fights for us. He is a warrior who defends us and protects us, even our homes and families. And Apostle Paul is thinking actually about Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17. Very same image tree. The helmet and the breastplate, and which is a description of God himself who fights for his people. It says, The Lord put on the righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. And as Isaiah goes on to say, he will be a redeemer who, who, who will come to Zion to those in Jacob who turn from transgression. He will be ultimately a perfect and sufficient savior. Mga kapatid, it's really talking to us about the Lord Jesus Christ who entered the lease and came and engaged in supernatural conflict with Satan and triumphed in obedience to God the Father and secured our deliverance. This is His armor and he shares it with us it is ours in him apostle paul is emphasizing the fact especially in verse 13 that this armor comes from god it is supplied from god it, it, it is god's armor given to us mga kapatid bakit gusto po niyang malaman natin yan? Because only spiritual weaponry avails in resisting Satan. There's nothing that anything man-made can do against Satan and the world and the flesh in the evil day. Only that which is supplied by God will avail. Notice again, especially verses 11, 12, and 13. Kung paano pa ulit-ulit na binibigyan po ng diin ni Apostol Pablo that what, what he wants us to do. He wants you to stand firm. When the assault of the enemy comes, he wants you to be able to stand firm. At pansinin niyo po yung kanyang first exhortation sa verse 14. Stand firm. Do you think that Apostle Paul is concerned about our standing firm? Yes! Bakit po? Because wobbly or shaky Christians who have no firm foothold in Christ are easy target or victim for the devil. And so, he wants you to be strong and stable in the midst of the assaults of the evil one. And so, he takes up this picture of the full armor in order to equip you to be strong in the midst of these assaults. Consequently, the Apostle Paul is concerned that we understand that if we are going to be able to stand in the evil day, if we're going to be able to stand firm and hold our ground, we need to have six things. Truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God. Notice first of all, the belt of truth. It is truth work deep down into the inner parts. Sa ating pong puso, that produces sincerity of mind and heart, a wholeheartedness, an integrity. Yung inward experience and communion with God flows out into, a, in, into every area of life, flows everything that we do and are in life. What Paul is, is saying is that to resist the devil, if you are to hope to stand firm, strong in the Lord amidst the spiritual battle, truth must have so taken hold of us inside out so that what we are inwardly is what we are outwardly. There must be spiritual authenticity. Then secondly, there's the breastplate of righteousness. The Apostle Paul 
is, is saying that in order to stand firm in the day of evil, we must have a life characterized by moral righteousness and holiness. Our growth in grace is never apart from the imputed righteousness of Christ to us. Sinasabi po sa atin ni Paul that out of that righteousness of Christ that is credited to us, so that we are accepted not because of what we have done, not because of what we deserve, but because of what Christ has done and because of what Christ deserves. Out of that imputed righteousness flows a life in which we are serious about growing in godliness so that a devout and holy life, moral uprightness, is essential for the battle with Satan. Bakit po ulit? Because he wants to attack, Satan wants to attack our consciences. The righteousness of Christ for our breastplate to protect our heart against Satan's condemning schemes. The next in verse 15, the shoes or boots that are the readiness derived from the gospel of peace. The gospel that gives us the righteousness that makes peace with God is a gospel that in turn equips us, impels us, and motivates us to share that gospel with others with an offer of peace for them also. Isn't it interesting that for Paul to stand in the evil day and having done all, to stand requires more than a defensive posture, more than protective armor. It also requires a willingness to go to others, to advance, to make forward progress with the same gospel that has protected and preserved us, our family, and saved and rescued us, that it may save and rescue others and other family also. Then in verse 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And, and that's an apt or appropriate description. That, doesn't it resonate, mga kapatid, with your own experience when, when temptation, when, when lies, when accusation begin to fly from Satan himself? They are flaming, burning, <laughs> searing uh, sore wounds. And should they penetrate and cause us to fall like flaming arrows they have a way of spreading we, we may often induce others to fall with us and, and and how are we going to defend ourselves against such a strategy well paul says you do it by exercising faith day by day moment by moment in jesus christ faith in jesus christ it is a shield that will extinguish the fiery darts of satanic hostility and opposition. We must have a living trust in God and an and entire confidence in God if we are going to be able to stand against the evil one. And Paul says we are to take the helmet of salvation, verse 17. The thing that enables the Christian when, when the battle rages to hold his head high with confidence in, and, and joy is the, is the fact that he is saved. Paul is saying that we must have a vital hope, a vital sense of God's having saved us of our past, present, and future salvation. In other words, mga kapatid, to resist the devil, we must be assured of our salvation. And Paul is saying the helmet of salvation is to be assured of your security, past, present, and future, that we are kept by Him, that we are saved by Him, that nothing can pluck you out of God's hand. There is no other security for your soul and for your family but there. Then finally, mga kapatid, there's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the Bible. It's the only piece of the equipment here, famously, that is both defensive and offensive. It is the Word of God that calls us to salvation to God, to Christ, in the Gospel. But it is also the Word of God that builds us up. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It is there to equip us. It is there to correct us, to instruct us, to rebuke us, to change us, to build us up into what God intends us to be in Jesus Christ. And so the Apostle Paul says it is the essential component of the Christian's battle against these principalities and powers that are arrayed against us and our families. Put on the Word of God so that it's part of your armor. That's why we Teach it every chance we get, Sunday morning and evening, Wednesday night, Sunday school, discipleship groups, in our, even in our family devotion. 
wherever we, we, we can. We want to be in that word. Not just so you will know more stuff or information, but so that you and your family armed for this battle. Brothers and sisters, the reason to be strong in the Lord because we are locked in spiritual conflict, in spiritual warfare, in a terrible battle every single day. And the resources the Lord has given us, the whole armor of God. Then finally and briefly, the reinforcement, the reinforcement that is available to us and to and strengthen us as the battle rages. Look at verses 18 to 22. There are two reinforcements Paul mentions. Prayer and people. Sinama ko na po yung uh, hanggang verse 22. Two reinforcement that are deployed to support us in the midst of the combat or the battle. Verses 18 to 20. The focus of prayer. Notice the four alls of prayer in verse 18. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. All kinds of prayers. All kinds of prayer. All the time for all kinds of people. Pray always. If we are going to engage the spirit of this age, if we, if we are going to stand in, in, in the evil day, if we are going to be able to stand firm against the assaults of the evil one, then we need to be a people of prayer, a family of prayer. There is nothing like prayer to knit our hearts and our desires to God. And there is nothing like prayer to remind us of how dependent we are on Him. When, when we pray, we are calling on the Commander-in-Chief to deploy the resources of grace to help us in battle. And often, He answers, doesn't He, mga kapatid? He answers when we cry by sending us people. And in this case, He, he, he sends Tychicus. Paul sends Tychicus, verses 21 and 22. Paul sends Tychicus to the Ephesians. And here's why, verse 22. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. That's why we need each other, isn't it, mga kapatid? Aren't there times when the battle is hot and sore, and we are weary and ready to fall, and then some dear friend or sister comes and stands with us in the trenches and fights beside us? And, and, and encourages our hearts. I need you, mga kapatid. We need one another. The Lord, as we cry to Him for enforcement in the battle, often answers by sending us one another, the people of God, the, the church of Jesus Christ, to fight a good warfare. The reason we must be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might is because we are locked in a ferocious spiritual warfare, spiritual battle. But praise the Lord that Jesus Christ has already won the victory. And it is my prayer for you and your family today, mga kapatid, that God would give you eyes to see the spiritual warfare, the spiritual battle, so you can see the enemy's strategies against your family and grab hold of the mighty spiritual weapons at your disposal. The resources that we need have been given to us in Christ, the whole armor of God. May God give you grace daily to clothe yourself in them. And the reinforcements we've been provided, prayer, to call on the commander-in-chief for the reinforcements of grace and people, one another, to help us in spiritual warfare. Brothers and sisters, is your home, is your family prepared for the attacks of the enemy? We, we must diligently fortify our homes and families against the enemy's attacks. God has given us everything we need to fight victoriously. Tayo manalangin.
Oh Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We, we pray that you would get your message through to our hearts, that you would work your truth so in our inward parts and that we would recognize, O oh Lord, how however dimly that we are at and in and, 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 and a war, we, we thank you that you have already in Christ triumphed over the principalities and powers and forces of evil in the heavenly places. That the heavenly places, though they are a battle zone for us, are also the sphere of our spiritual blessing in Christ. Tulungan niyo po, Panginoon, kami to stay in the fight, resourced by the armor of God and reinforced by supplies of grace given in answer to prayer and by the fellowship and encouragement of God's people. O Lord, protect, preserve, and strengthen our marriages, our families, that they may bring you glory. Do it for the glory of Christ's name in our homes, in our church, and through us in the world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen.
Let's come to the Lord in prayer po. Heavenly Father, we pray, O Lord, that you would, that you will build in this congregation a practical appreciation for the sanctity of marriage. That they would help one another in their marriages and families, especially in difficult times. We pray, O Lord, that there would be strong and strong marriages and families in this congregation, such as would witness to the truth and the blessing of the gospel and uphold this glorious institution in a fallen culture rapidly descending into chaos. We ask your help in this by the grace of the Spirit, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be alert and of sober mind and a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen.